Thanks so much, Judith, for being with us. Oh, All the way from Chicago. Yes, I'm so quite <laughs> delighted to be here. <laughs> from cold to cold. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> less From cold to less cold. Well, you've won numerous broadcast awards, and you've been nominated for an Emmy, and just so many different things. What made you decide to do something with a monastic community? Well, I always like to say those awards in $2.75 gets me on the public bus in <laughs> Chicago. Um, you know, it was, it was an accidental thing. I went to Mount St. Scholastica Monastery in Atchison, Kansas to give a presentation on my first book, 20 Poems to Nourish the Soul. And something happened to me there. I mean, I had been living this hectic life uh, as a journalist, but also going around the country talking about my first book. I arrived there exhausted, um, kind of spiritually dry at the time. And I was sitting in their chapel, which is surrounded by these beautiful blue windows, hence the title Atchison Blue. It's a particular color of these chapel windows. And there was St. Benedict with outstretched arms. And around him were the words in Latin, Omni tempore silencio debent studere. And I reached back into my old high school <laughs> Latin and did a rough translation, at all times cultivate silence. And I realized in that moment that what had been missing in my life were moments of simple silence and solitude when I could just listen and be. And without them, I was losing drop by drop the inner resources I needed to do the work I love, mm -hmm. to go around and do the speaking, but also cultivate an interior life. So you went in to that monastery to teach, and you ended up being, being the, the listener the student, yeah. and the learner. And now you're a, a Benedictine oblate. oblate. Yes. What can the Benedictine way of life teach us and help us in our contemporary problems mm -hmm. and stress and all that? Well. I suspect like a lot of lay people, when I first went there, I thought that going to a monastery was, was visiting a hopeless throwback to the past. Okay. You know, let the last sister or monk standing turn out the lights. Sure. But now I really look at monastic life as a window to the future, a future father I think we desperately need in our society, one that stress, stresses community over conflict, consensus over competition, silence over the constant chatter in our lives, and simplicity over consumption. So I think that monastic life has a great deal to teach us, and the ancient rule of St. Benedict also has a great deal to teach us. I'm in the news business, you're in the news business, so to speak. You look at the newspaper, um, care of the sick is a, is a monastic value. Well, we're having a big discussion about how do we ensure all the people in our country? How can we make this happen and make it a good thing for people. Hospitality is another Benedictine value. I mean, surely that hospitality affects the immigration debate that we're having now. And a sense of community, you know, look at, look at our Congress. Uh, we're, always, we're talking at and over each other. Mm -hmm. And the first word of the rule of St. Benedict is listen. And so I think um, it's, it's calling us to a, a different, a, a more balanced, and a saner kind of life, Benedictine spirituality. Makes sense. Yeah, you know, I love it uh, because I agree with you totally. And I, I'm, I'm experiencing this somewhat through Lent this year because I, I've given up TV <laughs> during the week. Yeah. And, and it's hard, and so I'm finding other things to fill that. But in today's world where there are so many distractions, TV and the Internet and phones, and how do people turn the corner and start to listen and have that silence? Well, I think a one of the things that monastic life taught me is the importance of pausing. You know, monastics pause s four or eight times a day, depending on what your order is, for prayer. And everything stops. And I thought, this is not for me. You know, I mean, how could I possibly stop? I'm, I'm, I'm a writer. I can't stop in the middle of a sentence. And I did when I would hear that bell ring. And I think taking time to pause periodically during the day is so important. We can pause and be more productive than if we just kept right on working. Uh, I like what Dorothy Day used to say, when, when, you're, you, when you're most stressed and you're most overwhelmed and having to get something done, pray. And I, I, that's, what, that's what monastic life taught me. And, and I have another book out called The Art of Pausing. And it is about that. It's about pausing, you know, at least once in the day to write three sentences, three holy sentences. 
you know, we can't all go to Liturgy of the Hours like monastics do, or we can't always have our book with us, but we can pause during our days. I'm glad you explained the Atchison Blue, uh, because there's nothing like a, a chapel filled with the, the light of stained glass, which is often predominantly blue. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be bringing Atchison Blue to a wonderful parish in Harvard Square, I Parish am. of St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the event, the book signing? Right. I have a book signing today and a little, uh, little presentation at the Grolier Bookstore in Cambridge on Plimpton Street. And then tonight at 7, I'll be speaking a little bit more about how we can take monastic wisdom and values and live them in our day-to-day -day lives as lay people at St. Paul's Parish in Cambridge and Harvard Square. When people read the book, Judith, what do you want them to come away with? Yeah. I want them to know that monastic principles are for everyone. You don't have to run away and live in a monastery. Uh, although I think that's a tremendous thing. I now think it's a great and valid thing to do with your life. Uh, but not all of us have that calling. But we can live the principles of the Benedictine principles of listening, of hospitality, humility, uh, simplicity, and especially community. That's what we need so much right now in our country is a sense of community, and the Benedictines have all of that. Were you really surprised how much you liked it when you walked in? Were you surprised what happened? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I was not expecting mm -hmm. to have that experience sitting in the chapel. I mean, I, I, was, I was going there as the expert, and as Father Reed said, I came, came away the student. And this is going to be a great uh, Easter basket stuffer. Where can people get a copy so that they can share it with themselves and others? Well, sure. It's on Amazon.com, your, your local Barnes & Noble store. If they don't have it on the shelves, we'll be happy to order it. And uh, my publisher, Soren Books, will be happy to provide it at Notre Dame University. Great. Well, Judith, it's been a pleasure. We appreciate you coming all the way from Chicago oh. to tell us about the book. I love Boston. Well, and we love Chicago. <laughs>